While there are 32-bit Vista drivers on Dell's website for pretty much every single device in this computer, the one thing that it doesn't have a driver for is the graphics. The writing was on the wall. This computer has no graphics drivers or anything that support it at all. I think it's better to use Windows 7 on it, lol. Linux is a boring option, agreed. Only thing that will run on this old laptop is some lightweight Linux distro or Windows Linux XP why not? I would say Windows XP 7 on it for running Windows Linux. I want to see a lot more Linux distro video more video than more than Windows 10 on this yeah, laptop. Yeah, you probably would have more luck installing Windows installing Linux. Linux. No, no it's Windows 7 on this laptop. Install Linux is the only way to revive Linux laptop. Trust me, it will run Windows XP 7 on this laptop. I know it's not a hard to use Windows 10 on this laptop. It's just Linux, but it's just Linux. It's probably trying XP with an extended kernel or we Linux. need to see the Linux video. Peggle. Yep, it's finally happening. Alright, enough cheesy intro. This video is a direct sequel, if you will, to my last video I did with this Dell Inspiron 1300, where I installed Windows 10 on this old laptop, mostly because I was bored one day. This video got way more uh, attention than I thought it would, so... And it prompted a lot of discussion in the comments about what would work better on it. I got lots of suggestions for different things to run on this laptop, but the most common one I got was Linux. Which, to be fair, is an idea I had while I was filming this video, actually. I wanted to see if a similar Linux distro to Windows would perform any differently than Windows. Linux is generally known for being easier on hardware than Windows is. Depends on, you know, the hardware, of course. But I wanted to put it head to head on this computer and see directly. For today's video, I'm going to be installing Ubuntu on this machine, mostly because it's pretty similar to Windows and also because my knowledge of what distros exist and how to use them isn't that great right now. So I wanted to start with something a little bit simple. I'm probably gonna get somebody mad in the comments about what I chose to run on this machine. So I will say if there are other distros or just operating systems in general that you want to see on this, I don't know, leave them in the comments, I guess. Maybe I'll put this poor laptop through a third video. At first, my idea was to install an era appropriate version of Ubuntu, which would have been 17.10 because that's what was equivalent to Windows 10 1709. However, this was the first version of Ubuntu that dropped 32-bit support, which is what this laptop is. So the last version that would have run on this is Ubuntu 17.04. Standard Ubuntu versions only get about a year and a half to two years of support, so what I decided to install instead was Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. 
Just like Windows 10, it's about 10 years after this computer came out. So with that in mind, let's get to it. I'm going to be installing this off a USB just like I did Windows 10. It's basically the exact same setup, if you will. If you missed the specs or didn't see anything about this computer, this thing has a Pentium M735 at 1.7 gigahertz with two gigs of RAM, an 80 gigabyte hard drive, a 15.4 inch 1280 by 800 display, and it came with Windows XP. The Ubuntu installer took a few minutes to boot up, but since it was a live installer, we were able to boot up right to a desktop, where right away I noticed this thing was running at native res, which you know what that means, it has a graphics driver. All the pain and suffering from the Windows 10 video, doesn't have to do any of that with this. There was, however, one issue I noticed right away, the Wi-Fi wasn't working then. Huh. We don't need Wi-Fi to install though, so I guess we can move on? I did try plugging in an Ethernet cable just to see if anything would work, so that hopefully it would download updates, but no. Even though it said Ethernet, it didn't pick anything up, so we'll have to continue without it. I don't really care about the install of Windows 10 that was on this anyway, but I made a quick backup of it so we can just go ahead and format the entire hard drive. Although I could have made this even worse by dual booting it with Windows. That would have gone well. Otherwise, yeah, this is gonna take a little bit of time since this computer kind of has slow USB. It's still faster than installing from a disk, but anyways. Still, it only took about 15 minutes, which actually isn't that bad. Sometime later, here we are, a perfectly usable Linux desktop. Even on the desktop, there still was no internet. There was no Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Which is, I guess, to be fair, since this computer uses both Broadcom, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet. And Linux is known to have issues with Broadcom devices. I checked in the BIOS of the computers to make sure it wasn't disabled, but no. It wasn't. Well, I can't do anything about the Ethernet, but what I can do is replace the Wi-Fi card with a different one, an Intel card from about the same time this laptop was new. This card's probably better anyway, so let's go ahead and try it. And sure enough, as soon as I turned the computer on, Wi-Fi worked immediately, so it was just a case of Broadcom being trash. Otherwise, yeah, that's it. There we go. Now that I had Wi-Fi, I did go ahead and install all of the updates. As it was an LTS release, this thing got standard updates until 2021. However, if you have Ubuntu Pro, you can get extended security updates all the way up to 2026, which is kind of interesting. I was really hoping I could do updates during the setup because they took a long time afterwards. After that was done, I did a boot up test just out of curiosity. I probably should have done this with Windows, but oh well. It took about two minutes from pressing the power button to booting up to a usable desktop. Not bad. Now as far as what you can do with this thing, well, it's a bit better since it does have a graphics driver at the very least. This thing came with Firefox version 47 out of the box, but using software updater I was able to get up to version 88. I wanted to try YouTube again, just uh, curiosity. It kind of seemed like it was going better. It still wasn't amazing. But then, out of nowhere, it just crashed. No response from the system at all. That's great. Other web browsing on this computer is fine. So my guess is that might be to do with the lackluster graphics in this machine. As you can see, even just going to something basic like Wikipedia, this computer is having a very fun time. This thing is always using around 50% of its RAM and a good chunk of its CPU, but it can do it, and I'd argue it's still faster than Windows. I did try to install Steam on this for fun, totally not because I wanted to try and run Peggle on this thing, but then I forgot that the CPU is too old for that. But hey, don't take my word for it, take Steam's word for it. This version of Ubuntu also comes with LibreOffice 5, which would have probably been current when this was new. Probably lighter on this machine than Microsoft Office would have been anyway, so for basic word processing, doing spreadsheets on this thing, yeah, it does it. Even something as basic as editing Office documents is still pretty taxing on this system, however. Overall, the Ubuntu experience on this thing was in some ways better and in, all, in some ways also worse. But to be fair, this does have at least some form of a graphics driver. Although this thing is really just a display output 
The good thing about Linux is that there isn't just one distro, there's tons of different distros, tons of different versions, tons of different ways I could have done this. Including Ubuntu itself, there's other derivatives of it that are all different in various ways. So I thought I'd go ahead and install some of those as well, specifically Lubuntu, Kubuntu, and Zubuntu, which are all different. I'm going to start with Lubuntu, which is meant to be a lightweight distro for old crap like this. As a matter of fact, it's designed to be able to run on a Pentium 4 or Pentium M. While Ubuntu stopped supporting 32-bit versions around 17, Lubuntu still supported 32-bit CPUs all the way up to 18.10, which means we can actually install one version newer 18.04 LTS instead of 16.04. I could have installed that, but I wanted to try the newest possible distro I could have. Lubuntu 18.04 had about three years of extended support, ending in about 2021, just about the same as the Ubuntu install on this. Because I replaced the Wi-Fi card on this, this time the Wi-Fi worked straight out of the setup, so I was able to download updates and everything while I was doing the setup, which saved a significant amount of time. Otherwise, the install process of this was just like Ubuntu's, which is to be expected. This install took slightly longer than Ubuntu, taking 21 minutes instead of 15, but that's fine. This one also didn't appear to have a graphical loading screen at all, just this black screen, which was a bit fun. But a few minutes of waiting and here we are at a usable Lubuntu desktop. Curiously, it was still trying to upgrade to version 20.04, which to my knowledge doesn't work on this, so it's a bit funny it showed up. Pressing upgrade now didn't do anything though. I figured I would check for updates just to make sure that it actually did them, and while it said it was downloading, since this is meant to be a lighter weight version of Ubuntu, there's a lot of stuff that isn't included in this quite like Ubuntu had, but it did have Firefox. I wanted to see if internet browsing on this was any better than it was on Ubuntu, especially because its RAM usage is almost half of what Ubuntu's was. I never saw this thing get above one gigabyte even while loading YouTube. I can't say that I can think of the last time I've seen an operating system with that good of RAM usage. And this time, YouTube actually worked on this thing. It wasn't amazing, it was probably still, you know, a frame maybe every second or two, but it works. The video plays, the UI is pretty unresponsive, so I couldn't check the quality or anything. I can't imagine it's any good. And just doing basic web browsing, like going to Google and just doing searches and stuff, this thing was way faster than Ubuntu. I was kind of surprised. This thing was way smoother on Lubuntu than it was on Ubuntu. It's not even close, to be honest. I was frankly impressed, to be honest. I've never even seen Windows XP perform this well with internet browsing. And this can still do LibreOffice, although it wasn't included with this, which is fine. You can just install it from the Software Center. Although I was only able to install Writer and Calc, which, you know, is good enough. Trying to install the other programs just kind of didn't do anything, which is fun. Otherwise, you can still do your same Office Documents work on this, which is probably just about the most this computer would have been used for anyway. I was a bit confused at first since the CPU usage was at 100% while it was doing nothing, until I realized it actually was installing the other programs and I was just massively impatient. The resource usage of Lubuntu on this can't even be matched by anything else. Just at the desktop, as you can see, this thing is not even using 400 megabytes of RAM. Windows 10 and even Ubuntu, honestly, would have been using over a gigabyte or just about close to. So this is seriously pretty impressive. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with how Lubuntu runs on this thing for being such a new version of it. I actually thought Kubuntu was a dud on this at first. It was just sitting here with this blinking cursor not doing anything. It just took some time to load the installer. Just like Lubuntu, this is version 18.04 LTS. As a matter of fact, all of these derivatives I'm trying today are newer than the Ubuntu version I installed, which is funny. And as it says here, Kubuntu is the KDE-ish derivative of Ubuntu. And just like Lubuntu, this install took about 20-ish minutes. Again, not too bad. This one did, however, chug more on the old hard drive than Ubuntu or Lubuntu did. While the RAM usage was a lot less than Ubuntu was, it still was quite slow, as a matter of fact. It can do it, but this thing's CPU is clearly struggling. I was going to experiment more with this, but 
just trying to load anything on this was kind of painful at times. It was honestly slower than Windows. This is of course to be expected, it's not entirely fair comparison to Ubuntu since it's a whole version newer. Also, this didn't update itself during the setup, so I had to do that on my own, which isn't that big of a deal, but it still was kind of annoying. But this is also a more fully fledged version of Linux, so fair enough I guess. Finally, Zubuntu, which just like Kubuntu, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on, but just like the other two, this is version 18.04, you know, I a bit of a theme here. This is the XFCE derivative of Ubuntu. Personally, this is what I use the most on things. It also took the longest to install, just taking just under a half an hour. This one also came with an even older version of Firefox than the other two, version 59 Quantum, which is a name I haven't heard of in a long time. Even more interesting because this one's software was entirely up to date. I went and checked just to be sure. Zubuntu was definitely lighter than Kubuntu, but compared to Lubuntu or Ubuntu, geez, this is getting really repetitive at this point, it still was struggling pretty bad on this old PC. Again, it can do it, but by now you might be noticing a bit of a theme with this thing. All of these problems really seem to be down to its processor. This old Pentium M just can't keep up with newer operating systems. Just like Kubuntu, it was kind of struggling to do a lot of anything, really. Now that I've installed a few different versions, I wanted to do some boot up comparisons between the others just for fun. Just like I did with Ubuntu, I waited until the hard drive stopped seeking constantly before I actually stopped the timer. In Kubuntu's case, it took about two and a half minutes, which is fine. Zubuntu, however, while it wasn't exactly that much faster in the operating system, it was significantly faster booting up, only taking about a minute and 15 seconds to load on this hardware. The last one was Lubuntu. This was the one I was most curious about, since honestly, it's the distro I had the best luck with. I liked the most on this computer. However, when I tried it, well, something was wrong. Something was very wrong. It just started popping up all these text messages on the screen, and then it came up with a text-based graphical boot screen, which was interesting. It also took a while to boot up. I sat here waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and it just got nowhere. It was stuck on this boot screen. Eventually, about six minutes in, since my phone kept turning off, I just decided to go ahead and restart it since it just wasn't doing anything. It was stuck on the screen. This turned out to be even worse than the first time because this time it just didn't get anywhere at all. So I don't really know what happened to be honest. It's kind of a shame because this was the one I liked the most. My biggest guess is, as you might have been able to tell, I actually quad booted this thing with all of them to make it easier for filming, and my guess is somewhere in there that just screwed things up, unfortunately. I'll have to deal with it on my own time since this video just is taking too long to do at this point, but it's definitely disappointing because out of all four of the distros I installed on this computer, Lubuntu was honestly the best performing one, which is, to be fair, that's how it was supposed to be after all. But there we go, there's a brief look at four different derivatives of Ubuntu running on this old laptop. This obviously does not give the full picture of Linux on this computer, and I thought about trying some other things on it, but there's only so many things I can do in one video, and trust me, this video still took a very long time to do, so I'm probably going to leave it at that. I might actually leave Lubuntu on this long term just because it was so nice of an experience. Maybe even dual boot it with Windows XP, but I'm not really sure. I'll have to go ahead and try and recover it later or just do a clean reinstall. 